as well just reset the solution and render again. On a scene like this as well, because we've got a lot of floor lower down that's quite, uh, quite expensive computationally, you can get buckets that will be stuck maybe here whilst other ones race through this area at the top. So one area that can help as well is to top to bottom and reverse your bucket order. We'll just try a smaller bucket size for this. And we've changed the solution so we're recalculating it there. And just try it with a thousand samples. Just increase the radius a little and try it with pre-filter off which can help to just clean up areas like this. So here we go again. Looking much better around here. Just a little section on there we could do with getting rid of. Let's have a look at these blurries. Right, so what we can do as well, Mitchell, and increase the blur on the filter to 0.7. And I was going to say drop the threshold so we capture more details along here. If we drop that to two, and our final output this is one important section actual viewed output for the image at the end would be 2.2, .2, so we need to change the, uh, the AA gamma to 2.2. .2. And we'll change. We can try an interpolated blur on the floor after. I just want to see whether the solution reused and locked from previous. If we can get this down and what time we were looking at there. So here you can see all the buckets starting at the bottom. And this is our big section for render time would be the floor. Now the blur in the sampling here will just help capture small details, stop any flicker, and also cleans up the blurry, uh, the glossy reflections rather. And dropping the threshold as well to two should capture a fair bit more here. cleaning that up nicely. We'll let that render. Okay, now we're at 7 minutes 50 seconds. Pretty good. We can clean up the, uh, the blur there. Minimum samples we could increase or we could drop the amount and threshold slightly. Oh, there's another trick we've, uh, we've got. Is into here. Interpolated blur, fast glossy interpolation. We'll leave the grid at half. Put that on at five to smooth it all out. And fifteen hundred high detail distance, so we're getting a nice, nice clean reflection here. Now we can also. Do that to speed up the uh, blur on here, on the wall panels, maybe something like a 200mm. That's for look. When we've got this scene finalized and, and uh, optimized, We'll save the preset so that you can reload it for your next interior scene. And um, obviously then you've got the camera settings, the render settings, the AMRS tweaks, the whole bag of tricks.
here you can see the interpolated blur cleaning up these small artifacts here and speeding up the render time again with the kicker here the chrome we put in a distance of three and a half meters to fade out the reflection just to optimize things and speed up they're all easy if you want the um, easy to undo if you want the ultimate quality but again it's always a trade-off with render time much much cleaner here and we should still get the nice reflections from the exterior on the panel here as well just in here much smoother reflections Now what we can do to increase the detail of the reflection there is we can try going back to the floor material we can either lower the look up increase the distance or a little of a combination of both what we'll do same as rendering and see how that looks if we just go to render region and over here Lovely. Happy with that. We can tweak the AA some more. We can maybe, now we don't need it so high to capture and clean up the blurries. Change that to full. Let's just render the the whole scene and see what render time we've got and the quality. A nice looking result for a 4 minute 38 second render time. We can tweak this further. Maybe go in to point one there, we're okay there, but on the floor. So, one point one there. We could probably drop that down to four. We'll be taking this tutorial further um, in the next one by looking at a camera fly animation from this scene and how to best optimize for that situation and the basic setup for it as well.
There we have it, 3 minutes 46. Now to save our settings, we'll just go to, back to the global options, click save, and I'll just save that as interior shop presets. You can select which ones you want to save or don't want to save. And there we have it. Let's save that. These scenes and renders will be made available via the CBAS website for download so you can pick them apart and uh, tweak the settings and play about. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.